More on this crash. Uh, let's go to uh, J.P. Tristiani. He's a former commercial airline pilot and aeronautical engineer. Uh, thanks for being on the program. My pleasure, Asiya. So let's talk about the recovery of this damaged cockpit voice recorder. Um, how difficult will it be to get some information? They've already picked up some audio. We don't know what kind of audio it's picked up. Could that provide some answers still? Oh, that would be, in my opinion, one of the most important pieces of information you can have for one specific reason. This aircraft was cleared to 38,000 feet. It was automated. It leveled off at 38,000 feet. And then one minute later, it departed that altitude. Now, that aircraft cannot depart altitude without a, a pilot command, and it cannot do so without talking to a air traffic control. He can do it in an emergency without permission. So what I would like to hear is on that voice recorder, if the aircraft left the altitude without the command of the pilot, you will hear an oral and vocal warning inside that cockpit. You will hear a bell ring and a voice will say altitude. Now, if the pilot commanded that descent by doing an input to the flight uh, recorder uh, for the uh, flight management system, then there will be no response. But he would not have left altitude without getting permission from that air traffic control center or declaring an emergency that he had to leave altitude and was leaving it. So that flight recorder is extremely important just in that instance alone. JP, the fact that this plane went down in safe cruising altitude, how unusual is that? Well, it's extremely unusual, Sia. That's, uh, that's, you, you can't find any databases unless the aircraft had struck uh, perhaps lightning, had a massive structural failure, the pilots had been overturned by turbulence, the pilots lost control. But an aircraft in cruise flight as this one, within one minute departing altitude with no voice commands, no contact with air traffic control, no code in his transponder that transmits an emergency, uh, you'd have to search high and far and long. I don't think you'll find much of uh, any previous uh, type of occurrence such as this. So, JP, you're clearly an expert in this. Give us some theories of what could have happened. Well, personally, the theory that I have is an explosive decompression at altitude. In other words, the pilots were incapacitated due an explosive decompression, which would be an instantaneous factor. And when you have, this is not, I'm talking about a slow leak in the fuselage. I'm talking about an aircraft having an exact hole in it that would immediately bring the cabin right up to the altitude you were at. Now, if that occurred, one, the noise, two, temperatures down to 35 below zero, three, an ice fog would be expected, and four, there would be a large suction heavy wind effect. Now, the pilots have, are trained to put on that mask in five seconds. It's a positive pressure, 100% uh, oxygen mask, and immediately, immediately commence a descent with a rate of 6,000 to 10,000 foot per minute, two minutes to get down below 15,000 feet. Now, if they did not, even though the mask would present itself in the cabin, you have about 30 seconds to 60 seconds of conscious ability to function. I'm not talking about you dying. I'm talking about the simple clapping of your hand, the simple motion a pilot would make to activate his system. Without that mask on, 30 to 60 seconds of cognitive ability to respond and function in that cockpit. But once they put that mask on, they can no longer communicate with air traffic controllers, can they? Yes, they can. The mask is a positive uh, response. All they would be doing is flip one switch, and they're right back on air traffic control frequency or emergency frequency or communications between the two pilots. No problem. The masks are designed with radio communication. J.P. Tristiani, we really appreciate your perspective. Still a lot of questions. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Asiya. My pleasure.